The nation's capital, Abuja, is a seat of power quite all right. But do you know that even the president, who is a resident of Abuja, has a senator representing him in the National Assembly in a manner of speaking? There's only one senatorial district in the FCT which covers the six local government areas. And tonight, we'll be speaking with a woman who wants to represent the people of Abuja at the upper chamber the Senate. She's an entrepreneur in the media space, a communicator who's had years of experience in event management and more. We have a pleasure of Mrs. Patidayo Benjamin Slani joining us tonight in our studio. Good, good evening. evening. And it's, it's good to have this conversation, really. It's something I've been looking forward to. But let's, let's get down to business. What would you say, or in your opinion, is missing in the representation of Abuja at the National Assembly, which you plan to bring on board? What is missing is a disruptive, bold intervention for the interface of the FCTarian from the place of indigenship and non-indigenship reconciling the very controversial engagements of that premise and argument and attack, as it were, for that position, which even though constitutionally it is enshrined as a position for national representation, anyone who's Nigerian mm. can present themselves for the office of the senator of the FCT. It is challenged singularly by the huge debate about the indigenship marginalization of the aborigines of the FCT. Regardless of the fact, what well, do let me say regardless, I would say even though we do have the act, the 1999 act that puts the FCT in that position to own every Nigerian to own that space. And now you look at that and it's like, what is the problem? There are problems that have escalated by the positioning of the indigene in the space of their constitutionally represented expressions, not just of interest, but of citizenship and opportunity. So in essence, you want to disrupt this idea that only an indigene so to speak, can represent the people of FCT in the Senate? Well, by law, that is already taken care of. What I want to disrupt is the fact that the advocacy for a non-indigene has been interfered with because the indigenes have not been given their fair and square deal with the transaction of the government and the original owners and aborigines of the FCT. And I believe that that has come really from the scaled, rescaled, and highly politicized, highly politicized advocacy to retain the position as an incumbent position for the indigene until certain matters are resolved. Those matters being resolved, I believe, can be done through an equitable engagement that directs unity at the center of unity through an advocacy that brings the different sides, not just in the debate, but in sensibilities, to a place of discourse, proper representation through the leadership, through the chiefdoms, and through, as it were, the governance, the advocacies that over time, institutionally, are beginning to administrate for that cohesion. So what you're bringing on board essentially is unity. I'm yes. Right. But let's break this down even further, and because I, I imagine the people of the FCT I mean, try to look at who fits their other candidates as well. What, and I'll rephrase the question, this this disunity, which you, you think is, is a major issue, what has that cost FCT? How is it a challenge? I mean, is it in terms of infrastructure, in terms of what, what exactly? You know, the power of unity sorry, is what drives socioeconomic engagements and the outcomes of the deliverables as promised in the place of election campaigns and the performance of the promise in the place of engaging the citizenry. What has happened is this in the political architecture of the FCT, both at the partisan level and non-partisan level, has created what I call an apathy 
a citizenry apathy within the Esoterian communities. So you find that elites and certain non-indigenous settlers of entrepreneurial, significant entrepreneurial reference, when it comes to the opportunity to vote, don't bother voting. Now it is left to the indigen, as it were, who takes this on as a very onerous but deliberate matter of tribal integrity. And you find that this happens across all party lines. I've got to put a bag in there, I've got to put a guadara in there. And they keep cracking it until what we're dealing with are the fragments. And this is creating a state of insecurity and restiveness amongst the youth. It is also creating a very bitter disparity, which is engendered the more by political opportunists who want to take over a system for personal gain without establishing the gains for the polity, the polity, the FCTarian polity. Infrastructure, we we'll say the roads, um, electricity to a certain extent because of the capital city, have a certain referenced, I would say, referenced position of, um, um, in terms of the scale of sectoral development right. better than other places. But the truth is, it's just at the center. Mm. Like you said, we have the six area councils, we have the 62 wards, and when you go into all of these areas, you find that there's a, this, a significant disparate representation of utilities that have to do with our socioeconomic civil, li civil lifestyle. Right. You know, quite, quite a number of areas to cover, so I essentially yes, no, would okay, like to okay, touch okay. On, on those areas. Are you an indigent of the FCT in the term indigent or in the sense of indigent? In the sense of indigenous, yes, I've been in Abuja for 30 years. Um, I came here as a youth corporate, and someone was saying to me the other day, you should go to your hometown to run, and I said, this has been my home and my town for over 30 years. Where as a youth worker, I came in, youth corporate, I came in, was courted, got married, I've had my four children, I've settled my business, my enterprise, and all of the initiative that has brought me into the media and the communication space, the various public domains, domains working its way, scaling its way through to international representations for my country, for my gender, for different advocates and agendas have happened because of Abuja. So you're redefining the definition of yes, I, So what I call, what I have redefined it as is the fc -terian. But I do not ignore the fact, like some people in a more disparate reference, who say, oh, it's a no man's land. I said, no, you don't call that a no man's This is not a no man's land. The reason we have Abuja and Suleja is the story of Abu and Sule, who were the two, as it were, composite references of two brothers who in the space of this duo geopolitical territorial space. One settled in Sule, settled in what is now known as Suleja, Abu settled here. Well, that's a story that you tell from the NTDC mm. and we go forward. With. But the reality is that the FC Terrian must understand we are a unified demographic. And this barrier, this, this politically incited barrier has to end. We have to come to a place of equitable understanding, relationship, and cultural existence. You know, being a, a woman as well, you have a couple of barriers to break. It's like you're, you're trying to take this on head on. First, being a woman, there's always a conversation about equal representation. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, the fact that also you, you, you have to you know, vie against someone who's been in the National Assembly for over 10 years now. In, and, and it's, it's yeah. said that this is essentially a PDP stronghold, and, and we've seen that in previous elections. And also the indigent part, there are questions as to how you would rally both the indigents and non-indigents. But as you've said, the fc that's a new term you're using. But tell us, because this is what a lot of people would also want to know, what kind of leadership experience do you have in your kitty? My leadership experience is one of advocating the power of the team spirit. As an entrepreneur, one in media, and one who has grown out of the youth hub of innovation here in the FCT, how did I get into the media enterprise and what I'm doing? Years ago, there was instituted a committee for the corner shop review in Abuja, because before we had the shopping complexes, we had what you called corner shops. And then they needed to set up corner shop review because what was happening was they were populating the metropo metropolis with these small corner shops. Mm. And they realized that as far as 
a capital city as a project of metropolitan global standard is concerned, this was completely diminishing the scale of the um, um, representation of a capital city in terms of its aesthetic. And so they set up a committee. And in that committee, it happened that my husband was drafted in as a youth voice for the FC Terrian settler, non-indigent. That happened purely by chance. He was advised by someone who was on the committee that stop coming around here and just being one of the observers. Put up your hand and make a case for the youth and state that something needs to be done to create space. There needs to be inclusiveness for the youth and the entrepreneurial opportunities in the capital city. And that was the very first. That, and that was how, in doing that, when they were settling the review committee members, FCT decided that we can't give you money, we'll give you land. That land became a principal investment that built up DOXA my business, my company with my husband. And that business has raised institutionally a framework right now that has trained skill sets, talents, as well as entrepreneurial representations, right. not just here, but all over the country. What, what, would, what would you say is your strongest point, your strongest selling point? Uh, and I say this because you are you're entering a realm that is Different from you know the the corporate the business realm. Politics is a different ball game entirely. You, I mean, a day is so long in politics. The kinds of intrigues that come, the horse trading, and all of that. So, how would you say you're fit for this? What kind of what's your biggest strength that you think will My work for you? My biggest strength, first and foremost, is that I'm a visible voice for voices speaking. And, and you have following. And oh, of course, I have following. Well, I didn't expect what, you to say well, no. Exactly. Anyway. exactly. But um, the kind of following I've got is like popcorn. It pops, it erupts. And that's the second thing. I'm a disruptive. I have the courage of she who dares wins. And she who dares wins takes what is intimidating, what demands that you have to face it, confront it, to beat it down, and to win it. And that in itself is an exceptional dynamic which has grown out of me from a place of fear. Like very many women, there have been challenges that I have had to grow through, I've been scaled through. Again, I may make reference to my husband who has trained me in the place of boldness. It's not just in speech, in articulating speech, but in understanding points. And the third thing is that in the space of advocacy and the privilege that I've had to host events and be engaged at the level of the capital-centered, presidential, top-line, premium events, it's given me an ear to hear outlines of not just governmental advocacies, but aspirations of governmental reform that have been put together by research teams that have not yet seen the light of day or been translated into a place of activation. Now, for me, therefore, in coming into the scene, I see myself not just as an agent of change, but the total expression of change. Okay, uh, let, let's project into the future. I mean, you have your aspirations, your mission to be in the Senate. Are you able, do you think you're able to withstand, you know, the pressures in the Senate and stand shoulder to shoulder with the men in the Red Chamber? I think what is principal first is a demonstration of my resilience in the primaries. What is primary now is emerging from the primaries as the ticket bearer, as the ticket holder, the flag bearer, and to write down an expression here, win the ticket at the primaries, win the seat at the general elections, terminate a 12-year incumbency, and set a history-making, record-breaking status quo for the ruling party of the APC in the FCT. How many people that, are you competing against right now, in your party? Right now, I don't have anyone openly who's competing, but I do hear that I have several that have discreetly purchased their forms or have had their forms purchased for them. I, I know you recently visited the youth leader of your party, and I know it's been part of the moves to get some sort of support. Are, are you hoping to be the consensus candidate, or you, you want this to go to primaries? Let's see what emerges. I don't have a hope. I have a complete persuasion and conviction that APC wants to win the FCT seat of Senate. They're not just looking for a woman, because yes, it's time for a woman. You're looking for a winner. You're looking for someone who clearly has 
the qualifications of a rugged, resilient popularity to be tested against any incumbent or going out there to have a credible direction for what is new, bold and disruptive in the face of the now. So when it comes to positioning, whether it is going to be by consensus or by delegate election, that is not my position to say. I'm only running as an aspiring candidate. I'm an aspirant. So that decision, I have different po postures coming from different viewpoints. Right. Oh, let it be consensus, so let it be. But you know, even all of that, like you said, the horse trading is so significant that it's made me understand that the real politicking or politricking happens at the primaries. It's interesting you are entering into that field as well. So, I mean, you call it politicking. I said it, it, politicking it, and politricking. It's okay. We understand. I mean, it's our viewers understand ways. that point. It's all politics. <laughs> because you know what? Politics is two things. Mm. Excuse me, I said it's transactional before it's transformational. So you've got to be able to get to the market. So you're ready to get dirty in this one. My dear, I know how to have a good bath. After you get dirty. Well, you want to understand what dirt is. As long as dirt does not compromise you, if dirt is what happens to you when you play the right kind of football, then it's okay. Let's handle this as sport. Let's handle it as the grit that comes from war and all of the bastions that come with the battle. If I'm going to get dirty from battle, I'm okay with that. Our if viewers will think I'm dirty, your opponent at this point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, God, know. Let, let's talk about th this fact. Um, you're a woman vying for this position. Yes. And it's, it's always been said that women make up a huge block of the voting population. I, I, it's a no, it is expected to be a no-brainer if a woman you know, steps into the race. It's expected that women will support and you naturally win that election. But for you, how much of support are you banking on from your women folk? I'll tell you what I am. I'm a prototype that mobilizes women to do what women do, not just for women, but for a space and a moment in time. And what I found is, you see, when you push gender without agenda, you will begin to, it's not just about twinning, you begin to achieve what is a very significant integration of unity, faith, peace, and progress. And this is the dynamic I am finding with what I'm doing. Across party lines, partisanship, people who have never owned a PVC are going to get their PVCs. I have an aged mama, that's what I'll call her, who called me and said, my daughter, what do you think you are doing? And I had a conversation with her. And she said, in my life, and I'm 70 something years old, I have never voted. And I have always promised myself I will never own a PVC because this country's politics is hopeless. But because of you, my daughter, can someone show me the way to get my PVC? I told her when she's going, I want to go with her because she's just one of many stories. Whether it's youth, I've talked with youth, and having them, their mindsets reset, rescaled, making them understand it's not about a popular following for me as your Auntie D. It's for you. Your vote is your voice. What are you saying? Oh, it's not about Adedai or Benjamin's Lani getting into the Senate. See you getting there. Because when I get there, you should be telling me what I am doing to serve you. For me, I've given the distinguished reference to as many people who get me into the seat. Why I remain your faithful servant. Let's wind down in, in about a minute or less. And um, uh, let, let me see how to couch all of this together into one, one question. There's a lot of conversation around zoning, essentially mm -hmm. north and south. And, and I know women have also clamored, even men as well, for equal representation. So I wonder within your party, it would look like this zoning thing is not really, I mean, going through. I mean, it's falling through as it stands right now. And I wonder what do you think when you see the conversation about zoning and it looks like there's no conversation about equal representation, or at least some more representation for women, even within your party. Well, I will simply say this again. I'm an aspiring candidate. So certain things remain within the space of an aspirant to speak about. While we need leadership to handle what in leading, they need to articulate so you're not more ready to specifically. Rock the boat. Well, I'm not saying I'm not. I already am a rock star in this boat. 
And when I say that, I mean it in the context that as a woman who was able to purchase her form, expression of interest form, with the free form by way of the nomination form yeah. being handed to us by the party, it still gave me a space right. to define myself, put myself in the room. Why? Because for every other woman who has ever run, right. who has never run, and who will ever run, Adi Dara Benjamin's Lani is a full force representation that is taking on this next season, not just of the campaign, right. but the delivery of the senatorial distinction of an FCT senator Madam, as a woman. Let's anchor this uh, boat at this, <laughs> at this point, but we'd like to thank you so much thank for joining you, us on the program. Thank We've been so speaking much. with Mrs. Adidaya Benjamin Zlani, who's vying for the only FCT senatorial seat. We wish you the very best. Thank you.